and you're live on the breakdown. All right, welcome everybody back to the breakdown. Here we are on another Wednesday, hanging out with you guys. And uh, Captain Captain Jack is behind the scenes over there somewhere, producing away. There he is. What's happening? <laughs> He's, he's producing his butt off. And wait, over there. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's the High Hill Gamer. There's Kat back with us again after a Yay. few weeks away. Yes. What's happening? Good to see you. Kat wearing a Batman t-shirt. Uh, slowly but surely, we're going to convince Jack that DC is good. DC is good. In fact, I brought, I brought DC show and tell with us as well. It matches. Yeah. I'm not anti-DC. <laughs> <laughs> You're not anti DC. You're just pro Marvel. That's yeah. What it is. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am. I am pro Marvel, except for certain political things that have started to come arise. Yeah. Which maybe that. Well, maybe yes. we rethink that. Yeah. Um, but we won't get into that right now. Uh, it's, yes, a personal, yes. it's a personal matter. I'm considering if I want my money to keep going to uh, yeah, well, you and, you and so a certain political party. But. You, you and me both. Uh, some, some news out of Marvel has got me. The old uh, political radio personality in me is is raging and pissed off at yeah, Mike Perlmutter of, of Marvel. So uh, we can talk about that um, censorship <laughs> around Captain America. Hmm. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that toward the end. We'll save the comics to the end because I've got visuals to go with that. Uh, the first big news that we can share with people today is uh, we're still basking in the glow of D23, which happened over the weekend. And, oh, boy, talk about revealing a whole bunch of stuff. We'll talk about the uh, the TV stuff first. Now, Jack, I know that you personally uh, bemoaned, uh, along with a lot of the rest of us, bemoaned the loss of the Marvel shows on Netflix because they, they were, for the most part, they were really, really, really good. Uh, Daredevil in particular was just – uh, a cut above. Uh, yeah. After D23, man, do you think that uh, what we just got out of Disney's new Marvel um, titles as far as TV goes, uh, are they going to make people forget that those other shows even existed because we're getting She-Hulk, Moon Knight, we're getting uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision, we're getting the Falcon and Winter Soldier, we're getting Loki. They're giving us everything to make us forget about those other Marvel TV shows or streaming. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped about a lot of it. I mean, the idea of She-Hulk sounds awesome and it's a great character. But for me, the problem comes back to like, some of us waited a long time to see a decent Daredevil, a decent Luke Cage, a decent Punisher. Right. Like how many, and I know Jeff, you and I, uh, ha, 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 look, it's easy. Ah. <laughs> Uh, but I know you, Jeff, and I have discussed Punisher several times, and we don't always agree on the movies, but well, right. I personally <clears throat> always felt like the movies let us down, and I'm a huge Punisher fan, and the show is like really dead on. And I know a lot of people you know, argue about how accurate it was to comic, but for me, it was just a really good adaptation, I'll say. Um, right. And I'm not going to forget that. I'm not going to forget that it's sort of a petty squabble between corporations that stops that from continuing. Um, and maybe they'll they'll try to reboot or whatever, but like I think they've already announced now that Moon Knight is definitely going to be PG, right? Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure. I, the Moon Knight thing is the one that I'm the most excited about uh, because that's uh, that was such a great character mm -hmm. that can take Marvel in so many different directions. There was a recent podcast with uh, the Fat Man Beyond Kevin Smith podcast where there was an audience member who asked the question about, you know, finding, you know, who, who would, what Marvel properties is some, some question about those. And there were people who were saying, you know, what about a Tim Burton version of Moon Knight right. as a movie? And then of course D23 came along and said, no, 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 we're giving it to you as a TV show, which right. I, I think if they use the same sort of sensibilities they had with the Netflix shows, I, Moon Knight could be the big, big hit. A lot of people excited about She-Hulk, but uh, for me, Moon Knight is the one that really jumped out, and I thought that's, you know, you've got a, a kind of a mercenary international character who turns into this Moon Knight character. I, it just right. there's so many places it can go, and there have been so many great versions of it. And I'm happy to say that I have uh, some of the the original, not not the first Moon Knight uh, issue, but I have the 
the second series that came out in the 80s. I, I, do, have, not, I do not have Werewolf by Night 32, yeah, which is the yeah. first appearance. And that's going to be a freaking fortune now. The price yeah. on that probably just went way and up. that was a high key comic. I mean, when you talk about expensive key comics, that was has always been an expensive key comic, even though from what I know, Moon Knight's never been like a super famous character. No, no. They've had um, a hard time giving it. He's had a hard time maintaining a long running series, right. no matter what incarnation, but he keeps coming back because it's but such an interesting character. For some reason, that Werewolf by Night 32 is like super high uh, cost when you go to buy it. I mean, you, you can expect right. to spend three to $500. Well, it is, it is a first appearance, I think, and that's that's big enough. It's going to be even more now, obviously. You know, they, they collected. Those in the uh, the early '80s, they did a three issue kind of uh, deluxe format version of the original Moon Knight appearances. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I've got that one. That's one Moon that Knight I have. number one. Yeah, it's yep. a favorite of mine actually. Uh, and then there's the there's another one that came out uh, either before or after that that I have the number one for as well. Mm -hmm. The uh, Moon Knight uh, something Egyptian, the uh, whatever it is. Uh, anyway. Um, but there's a collected version of, of all of those early appearances that were done in like a, not a prestige format, but they were done in a nicer gloss paper, deluxe size. Uh, Bilson Cavage was the artist right. on it. Uh, I, I've had those three issues for years. They're reprints, but they were repackaged of those original appearances. Mm -hmm. And uh, I picked up a, 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 like a three pack. I was walking through San Diego Comic-Con, you know, last month, and there was a dealer that had all three of those. And I already had them. But he had all three of them for like nine bucks, and he had all three of the uh, Longbow Hunters by Mike Grell for nine bucks. And I grabbed both, and I'm like, I own these, but I can't pass them up. So yeah. now I'm, I'm happy that I have those extra Moon Knights. And I even at Heroes Con, we were at Heroes Con this summer, Jack. Uh, we didn't interview Bill Sinkavich, the artist, but we should try to get him on for season two for sure, because he well, gave one of the funniest speeches at San Diego. But he signed issue one of that for me at Heroes oh. Con. So now I'm like, I got one that's signed just in time for the Moon Knight TV show. So, Well, you know, we can always make Cat go hunt them down. Let's that's, right. that's right. We'll send her out. Cat on the prowl. <laughs> now, Cat, what do you think? What, what show are you excited about out of all those uh, announcements? Um, so for me, it was um, She-Hulk, but... I'm kind of like, I'm hoping that they don't tame Moon Knight. I'm mm -hmm. hoping that they, you know, let Moon Knight shine for, for what it is. Um, I'm just kind of concerned as to, is everything going to be tame? Because it's on a Disney uh, platform right. itself, whereas on Netflix, they can, even though it's still Disney owned, they could kind of get away with rougher and um, more edgier things on Netflix. So I'm I'm just interested in seeing how it's all going to play out because I don't want happy ending sugar coating and like, right. I'm going to hit you, but you can't see the punch on screen. You could just hear it. With the blood. Right, right. Well, yeah. you know, that's, that's been a, a chief complaint. You know, everybody, when Disney bought Marvel, Everybody was mockingly putting mouse ears on the Punisher and all of this stuff. Yeah, and like, oh, no, it's the worst thing to happen. Uh, Disney, I think, is smart enough to let the material, you know, they're smart enough to go, we're going to let you do the material the way that it should be done, right. which they have with the movies uh, for the most part, let the movies sort of define themselves and, and be true to themselves. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to be – you know, same thing panic set in when Star Wars got bought out by, by Disney. Sure. And it's like, no, Disney is smart enough to go, these things make money based on their fan bases, and we're going to let the creators be the creators. I mean, I, I think, um, if I if I remember correctly, I heard parts of the DC, DC Plus streaming, uh, you know, it's going to be much like Netflix, where it's going to have family, it's going to have much more adult oriented and things like that because there was a time there that Disney owned Miramax pictures, which put out right. Quentin Tarantino and Kevin Smith movies. So I, I, I trust that they're going to do it the right way uh, because otherwise fans will reject it. If, you know, if you give yeah. them Moon Knight and they go, Oh, Moon Knight's being played as a campy Batman 66 kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, everybody's going to hate that. They're going to hate you know, it. Honestly, that's what I'm kind of fearful because even though Disney does kind of know what they're doing, um, it's still made for TV 
You know what I mean? So I don't well, know. The streaming, though, like, so I think that's you know, a different platform, right? I mean, streaming is, you know, that, well, that, that's the hardest is, thing yeah, for us to wrap our heads is around. Streaming is the nowadays TV. TV right, right. <laughs> so I don't right. know if they're going to be like, well, this could be, you know, in the hands of anyone on tablet, on phone, on, on TV. So I don't know how they're coming about this streaming service. I don't know if they're just yeah. like, okay, we're going to have an adult section, a kid section, a family section. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know how they're trying to divvy it up. So I, that's just my, like, my concern. It's not that so much that they're going to, you know, fuck it all up. It's just more of, you know, how, you know, like, how are they approaching this? Because right, yeah. it's true. I don't like, okay, they're like, okay, well, this is the movies. We can stick a rated R because we know, you know, adults are going to go, but this is for TV. We want to keep it PG and not even PG 13. And I'm just like, kind of, yeah. you know, I'm excited, but kind of nervous all at the same time because it's something new, something we don't know what to expect overall. Well, I I, I think I think we got a lot of that with Netflix too when when Daredevil came out and people saw it mm -hmm. and they went oh my gosh we didn't expect it to be so adult yeah uh, DC's DC Universe app uh, with the Teen Titans and the Doom Patrol and even Swamp Thing show I think people were like oh this is a DC Universe app that's for uh, all ages anybody can sign up yeah. for it yet the Teen Titans out of the yeah. gate announced we're going to be an adult kind of show. Mm -hmm. On a on a comic book streaming site, uh, so I think the the I think the ground has been broken so that DC uh, DC is going to steal the Netflix model. You know, and you set up Netflix, and everybody in the house has an account. And if mm -hmm. you're an eight year old in the house, your account is only going to show you things that are appropriate for the eight year old. Yeah. If you're an adult, you, know, you can set those parameters, or the the parents can set those parameters. So yeah. I, I have a feeling that. Disney is going to just take all the best parts of how Netflix does their business and, and do it one better. I mean, in fact, they've, they've already, it's insane. They've already said that you can get a package now with uh, Disney plus Hulu yeah. ESPN, yeah, HBO. Uh, for like 12, 1299. And at, at D23, they had a kiosk or a series of kiosks where people were signing up for a year, for, well, no, for four years or three years, oh, and, wow. it, and it and basically, if you signed up for it's three years, it came to like four bucks a month. If it was you one forty. If what I saw yeah. was right, it was one hundred and forty bucks flat. Yep, flat. And you signed up, and it was a three-year deal. You were already signed up for three years, and it it came out to like three less months. than four bucks a month. That and that's open to the public now too. We've got an article up on the Facebook uh, issues with page where you can go find out how to do that. Anybody can do it now. They Disney is ruthless. They are out oh, yeah. to kill every other streaming site with this launch. I Clearly. think the, the streaming sites that will survive will be the ones that produce enough content on their own. Right. That they can, they can get people in that want to, like if you're on the DC app, you can see it when it first comes out. Right. And eventually it'll be on the Disney app because I think Disney will get into buying up, you know, those, those well, properties. I think, I think the DC stuff will wind up going to uh, either Netflix because it is on Netflix in other countries. Right, but not or, in the US. Or I think Amazon is probably – Amazon is spending uh, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars on the Lord of the Rings TV series – the uh, the boys is a comic book series. They're buying a bunch of uh, you know angels and uh, omens or whatever that show is. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Amazon is right now outspending everyone. I, and Netflix seems to be kind of they're spending a lot of money, but they're doing more feature length things. They're buying up features. Ninety, you know, they're not doing as much TV. I wonder if Netflix is not planning to change their whole business model uh, to avoid getting slammed by this Disney thing too hard. Right. And Amazon seems to be the one that is doing all the TV shows. So it's kind of curious to watch how the others are reacting to what Disney is doing. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's a, it's an interesting time because I, I wondered if Netflix would survive. Part of me had this sort of theory running that Netflix would become a content creator and sell and they well could. Yeah. to other people. And they, I think they will have to consider it maybe at some point, you know, if they just keep getting choked out this way, but who knows, right? I mean, 
I, you know, I said I was always going to be on Netflix. I didn't care about the other ones. And now I watch, you know, I have Vudu, I have Hulu. I right. think the thing that's going to kill off some of these streaming options is going to be that people are tired of having 10 of them. Nobody wants five. It's going to be too much. Yeah. And, yeah, and Disney is offering Netflix was to pay less. Yeah. So you didn't have to have cable with 500 channels where you watch six. Right. You know, you got Netflix, one thing and everything you wanted was right there. And now it's like, we're heading back in the same direction. And Disney um, certainly with the amount of stuff that they're going to have, they're kind of putting themselves in a situation of where you would say like, why would I have anything else for what? Right. You know, for Stranger what? Things. Oh. Okay. I'll sign up for Netflix for a month, binge watch Stranger yeah. Things and then buy. Yeah. 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 So, oh, that's the way I signed up for the HBO streaming was I watched all of the last season of game of Thrones in a month. And then right. canned it, you know. It's like that's what we did too. We did the exact same thing. We were like, "Oh, yeah. okay, we've got yeah. seven, seven, eight episodes of uh, right. Game of Thrones. We got this." And that's we yeah. did the exact I, I waited. I waited until May to do it so I could watch all of Game of Thrones and then uh, watch the Deadwood movie when it came on and then cancel. <laughs> so you know, yeah. and, and P, I think more, more, and more people are doing that. Except, and Disney is kind of. Well, they're setting themselves up so that people won't jump ship for three years. They're they're setting it up so hey, people are getting in for the whole three years. They're basically building a permanent audience because if you've if you've signed up and had it for three years, after that three years is over, if we're not all dead in some Holocaust wasteland, <laughs> well, first of all, they've already cashed the check, but they'll just re up it. It'll just be automatic, and people will go, oh yeah, that's right, we've always had Disney. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is very smart. I mean, they're very, very clever about the way they do things. Well, keep in mind, this is just some really random uh, uh, trivia for you. Uh, nobody has ever spent as much as ESPN, period, ever. Right. Um, there was one year that Netflix was like, oh, we're spending like we're about to break a billion dollars or something that we're spending. And they weren't even close at the time. It was like they were spending a, almost a billion, and ESPN was spending seventeen billion. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's year. ESPN job, right? has always, yeah, been the top dog. So that, I just think that the fact that ESPN is working with Disney on this, and I'm not sure, right. maybe there's some conglomerate where technically they're uh, uh, the, the, the ESPN is owned by Disney. Disney owns uh, ESPN. They own ABC. So they've got a network. Uh, I mean, Disney has it all at this point. Everything you need, and then Hulu, even is doing live. You can do live shows uh, as opposed to waiting the next day for Hulu. Basically, they're going to replace the uh, the cable and the satellite with everything on the Disney app. I I, yeah. I think that's what they're trying to do. Right. Huh. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Well, if you can get all the networks all in one place, why wouldn't you? Yeah. So this is the. I, I just grabbed this real quick. This is their. The movies. Phase, yeah. yeah. Well, this is yep. phase. Three, it says, right? So oh, this no. is what we've seen. But what happened to Inhumans? Um, Inhumans, the show, and I just know the um, <laughs> yeah. That I mean, that's all. A lot of that has changed. Um, I know there was a new mutants movie that apparently has been filmed at Fox. That's oh uh, yeah, that's this somewhere. whole other thing. That uh, yeah, there's so yeah. much. That's just uh, so yeah, they, the, it got shelved and brought back, and then it got shelved and they yeah. got back, and now they're like, I guess we're putting it out, but they openly said that they they think it sucks. So who's gonna go see it? Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, I think the Inhumans thing got pushed back, but the Eternals is now like the the hot new. Yeah, that's the big nope, one. A comic yeah. no one ever read that suddenly is going to be a movie everyone wants to see, which seems to be the way they roll. Uh, so so you know we'll we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually pretty. I don't, are you guys excited about Eternals? Would you yeah, say that you feel? I'll go see it. Them? Yeah. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm like, I'll go see it, but right now I'm like, Meh, I could take it or leave yeah. it. I wasn't excited about Guardians of the Galaxy, but it worked out. So. Yeah. You, know, you gotta, gotta. You have to trust what they're doing over there, even though. And this is this is the hot button topic of the past couple of weeks. Even though it doesn't look like you should trust what they're doing because of the Spider-Man debacle that's going on, which uh, which Disney very happily let Sony take an absolute bloodbath over for the first week of this. And now rumors uh, are coming out. People are from the inside talking about it, saying, no, actually, Disney's the one that really screwed the pooch on this. Yep. And so there's a, a lot of stories coming out now saying Disney is basically trying to vilify Sony 
and for what purpose, I don't know. I mean, I saw a meme about uh, somebody saying, you know, how much for Spider-Man? And they go, not for sale. And there's like, how much for the company? Yeah. And I think yeah. that, that may be Disney's plan is that they're trying to crush Sony right now because they want everything. Hmm. Yeah. This is the, this should be phase four. Yep. So, so Black, Black Widow, Widow. Yeah. yeah. Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, Shang Chi, I'm I'm actually pretty excited about, and that right. I think Sorry. everybody needs to see the Loki show, right? Uh, I forgot about the Falcon and Winter Soldier. I kind of right. I kind of want to definitely see that one. That that's one that's on my radar. I I don't know why I forgot it because I'm like super <laughs> like like well I don't want to say super excited because I'm excited, but I have you know I I'm one of those that's like expecting. It to be bad, and then that, that way, when it is good, I'm like, oh yeah, I was worried for nothing. Like I'm, I'm horrible that way. Well, then, then we got Hawkeye up there, which everybody forgets. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. Poor Hawkeye. It's like okay, he's, come he's on. He's kind of like the Aquaman of. Oh, he's even worse. I think he's even worse than than the Aquaman. Oh, oh he's, he's yeah. Like, he's like the. Uh, it's like the monkey that came with the Wonder Twins. That's where he is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I know there's apparently a lot going on in that the Doctor Strange uh, universe yeah. of madness. There's talk that Wanda may actually be a villain in that. Uh, oh, in it's going to be more of a horror thing, too. It's not going to be straight oh, up. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So. And Shang Chi will be a kung fu movie, obviously. I mean, they, you know, they're going to play around with different genres at, at this point, I think. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll get Black Widow next year, so it's a good long wait until this whole thing kicks off. And hopefully, by then, maybe they'll work out the the Spider Man stuff. Uh, I will say, it, seems, it seems preposterous that Tom Holland won't be uh, in the Disney movies anymore at Marvel. Yeah. 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 Well. I, I think that's it's one of those things at this point, every time everyone thinks a decision is made, we find out, no, there's still like a, a deal on the table or whatever. I was going to show you this real quick. Uh, if you guys aren't aware oh, yeah. of the cast for the Eternals, I kind of wondered like the Eternals, it's a known, a well-known comic run. I think everybody knows about them. I, I think right. there's a lot of like gambit in the Eternals and there's like sort of these crossover things that have made maybe the Eternals more familiar to most of us. Um, yeah. But I have a theory, if you just look at this real quick, that they're like, well, you may not have heard of the Eternals that much, but they're hitting it with a huge cast. You know? right, right. Maybe that'll oh, make up uh, for it. <laughs> and what's his name? What's his name from Game of Thrones? Uh, not Richard Madden, but the other guy. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Kit uh, Harrington is in it, too. So yeah, they just recently announced that. that. Yet. So yeah, so that's not the complete cast in that picture. <laughs> they keep announcing more people, you know. So, I, I mean, I'll, definitely, I'll, I'll see it because they're weaving all of these movies together. So they have a, a big game plan uh, for everything. I'm, I'm just, I'm waiting for the Fantastic Four to be announced. It's like, come on, guys, <laughs> let's, let's get that in the Marvel <laughs> universe. Let's get Doctor Doom and Galactus yeah. going. I'm a little nervous yeah. if they do another Fantastic Four run. It just hasn't gone well. <laughs> I know, me too. That's why I was like, mm. <laughs> no, no, they'll do it right if they do it over at Disney. I mean, they, I think they've got a plan for it too. Apparently, you know, it's like it's jinx. I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like well, we're just in a competition how to make weird faces. <laughs> It, Pixar already did it with The Incredibles, so we know how to do it. Um, yeah. yeah, that's one of those things that I wondered if Fantastic Four, it, you just do it as like an animated thing and let it go. Um, well, I, heard, I, heard a, uh, I heard an interesting, uh, this is a fan sort of theory that was floated out there, but um, they were like, oh, you know, what if we do the Fantastic Four as they, they are characters that were around in the 1960s. You know, we went back to Captain Marvel in oh. the 90s. We've seen the X-Men in different iterations of different decades. It's like, what if we pretend like the Fantastic Four have been around right. all this and, time? And they're which like would have been inappropriate. much older yeah. characters. So uh, I kind of like that, although doing the 60s makes them really, really much older. Yeah. Uh, but, well, but you, know, you have time travel. Well, that's it, time travel. I mean, I mean, that's it, yeah. In the comic books, they, they disappeared at the end of the last Secret Wars run, and then they came back, and they were like, oh, you guys have been gone for five years. And they're like, eh, well, no, but we really haven't. It's time 
is weird and whatever. Well, yeah. If you're a reader of the Fantastic Four, you know that that I, in a lot of ways they really I don't I, I don't want to say it be totally wrong, but they seem to be one of the first ones that really dived into interdimensional and time yep. travel within yep. the comics. Um, I know. Um, yeah. A lot of comics did, but I think they were really one of the first that did it at least regularly. Yeah, the, the idea of a multiverse kind of thing, uh, really the Fantastic Four was one of the preeminent books that sort of dealt with that as a concept. Yeah. And uh, before before we get into comic book stuff, though, we got to talk about Star Wars as, as <laughs> movie. You know. We have to. Uh, D23 was, was big with Star Wars. First of all, well, we got uh, The Mandalorian, uh, which is the, the TV uh, oh, yeah. We got the official uh, Ewan McGregor coming back as Obi-Wan Kenobi in a TV series, yeah. uh, which people have been wanting that for a long time. I think a lot of ideas Disney, uh, Marvel, not Marvel, but uh, Lucasfilm and Disney might have had for those anthology films are now being put into TV shows. I think and so, yeah, you know, that where it didn't quite click or it seemed – that other you can follow the story on, on streaming too. I would rather see ten episodes of an Obi Wan Kenobi story arc than a two hour movie. Yeah, if, yeah, it's, done right. Right. if it's done right. And mm -hmm. the Mandalorian looks really fantastic. You guys see the Mandalorian trailer? Yeah, I have not yet. Oh my god, you got to go watch it. Oh. I know, I know, it's I failed. Really badass. It is everything you wanted and more. Uh, you know, it's like you just can't miss. And you've got, uh, you know, of course, you've got. Um, there's a oh, gosh, uh, cast, and there's some like new characters yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. that they talk Even about I adding know what they're doing, uh, in a big, big way. So it's 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 spot on. Dave Filoni, who did the the Clone Wars animated series, is a big part of this. Uh, uh, what's his name? Director of Iron Man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, plays uh, yeah plays. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so since I heard like a, a sort of. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this would be a good chance. Let's do we want our, what's our giveaway for this episode? Oh, what, what are we giving away? Because hmm. I got I stuff know. to give away. I mean, what's our what's our our uh demand, our test for the for the giveaway? Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Should we, it be um, is it trivia? Is it you know, because this is I think. We can make people uh, give us their best explanation for what the hell is going on with Ray at the end of the Star Wars trailer and see see which one we like the most. It can be like an essay contest, not sort of like you know, um, <laughs> five thousand words, words series, right? Yeah, more than three words, but less words. than five thousand. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there are a hell of a lot of fan theories suddenly because of course the it wasn't even a trailer. It was like just a kind of a promo piece that was for like, it was two and a half minutes long. And the first minute and, and 40 seconds were featured featuring shots from the other movies mm -hmm. from the rest of the trilogy. And then suddenly you got like 30 seconds of episode nine that yeah. culminated with Ray having a double bladed lightsaber that unfolded and looked like Darth Maul's lightsaber from episode one. Yeah, and everybody yeah. The, the fan community collectively went nuts as soon as they saw that. And they were like, what? What is this? So yeah, you can this? see that she looks like unhealthy kind of the way that all yep. Sith kind of get that. A little emaciated looking. Yeah. 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 Um, and the, I mean, the theories are ranging all over the place from it's a clone. It's not really her to, you know. Um, that she's faking it and that she turns and right, you know, you and, know. yeah, or it's a vision too, or it's a uh, a dream. Yeah, that's the one I heard. It's somebody's vision, and um, yeah. they the one I heard was um, uh, they didn't say it necessarily who saw the vision, but it's a vision of things that might happen if certain um, events right. take place. Because so. that's a part of Star Wars, right? You have these visions, you have these flashes of, of potential futures and things like that. Here's a, here's a great thing. We we put this up online too. Uh, apparently, somebody on Reddit sniffed out something from the Disney website promoting this. Oh, yeah. Where uh, and, and my theory on this is that it's much ado about nothing because I, I think whoever wrote the copy for it was just kind of being flourishy with words 
and you know referred to this as a vision of Ray. You know that everybody freaked out over this vision of Ray uh, uh -huh. and that sort of thing. And then once it got pointed out, the phrasing they went back and changed it and said you know, something about the sight of Ray. Uh, with the lightsaber and, and the, the Sith robes. And so I, I think somebody who doesn't know much about Star Wars used the word vision right. in, in this bit of PR. And then people were like, you asshole, vision means something in Star Wars. Go and change that. People are going to think that it's one thing and it's not. And so the fact that they changed it, uh, I think, you know, everybody's going, oh, it's a vision now. Oh, it's a vision. She's not really a Sith. Oh, it's just a vision. It's like, no. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that was just something that was put in there by mistake by the copywriter. Uh, I think when they changed it so that it didn't inform that viewpoint, it's pretty yeah. clear. Yeah, I think it's I pretty I think clear. if they left it, it would have been a, a, a little hint, like a little Easter egg to see exactly. it. Now. Exactly. But I think when they change it, they're just doing it for the fans. They're basically being like, it's not fair to the fans to mislead yeah. you. Oh, we're going to clarify this. This is what mm -hmm. we meant to say. Uh, but still, people are going to hang on to that now. They're going to think there's a conspiracy and that, oh, no, no, this is just a dream and it's not real. Oh, there's a conspiracy. It's just not about oh, sure. <laughs> Well, and, and Keep in mind, too, that J.J. Abrams, who is back directing and co-writing the script, is known for misleading uh, people, for putting images out there, for putting information out there. Yeah. Deliberately sends you down the wrong path. And, and this could be a classic case of J.J. just doing the same thing. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but I'm I'm looking forward to this movie in a, in a big big way. I think I think he'll find a way to tie this up, that is really satisfying. And and I think Anthony Daniels, who plays C3PO, was at D23 with the rest of the the cast, and he even apparently got emotional and was talking about it. And he even talked about how satisfying a conclusion this is, even though he can't believe that it's coming to an end. And anybody that knows him, he is he is not <laughs> one to mince words. And yeah. I think if, if he didn't like it, yeah. you would know. He's very yeah, catty about it. I actually saw so someone I, pointed out, it was like during episode two, I think, he did yeah. an interview where they're like, so are you excited to see this one? He was like, I think lots of fans might be excited. <laughs> he was like, not going to be saying He throws shade like nobody's business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, someone might be excited to see this, I think is what he said. Everybody's like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the fact is that he seems to be pretty sincere about this one. And I, I think they all trust J.J. Abrams. And, yeah. and, you know, they're they're recycling footage that was unused of Carrie Fisher that's making it so that she can be a, a part of this movie. And there's that really creepy thing that J.J. revealed saying that in her last memoir that came out in 2017, I think, The uh, Princess Diarist was the name of the book, that she mentioned in the book something about, you know, a thank you to J.J. Abrams for putting up with me twice. And he revealed to people, he was like, I only worked with her that one time. It's almost as if she knew she would be in this movie beyond her grave. Like this wow. really kind of creepy sort of thing. Like, yeah. why would she put that in there? Why would she say she worked with him twice when she had only worked with him once? Like, so now that's got a lot of people kind of going, whoa, that's Okay, I will say we just got a. We've gotten. We're getting all sorts of comments, and I have a watch party going, and so um, <laughs> I, I was just going to throw in there. Uh, Dimitri chimed in and said, "Well, what if uh, Sony bought Star Wars?" <laughs> and Katie came back with, "No." <laughs> yeah, Sony doesn't have that kind of money. They they haven't. Uh, the only movie that made anything for Sony this year was Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Disney's the only company that's got the kind of clout to buy to go buy other companies. Yeah. to buy Star Wars, to buy all that stuff. So uh, I think the other thing is probably more likely that Disney will buy out Sony at some point. Yeah, or, and I think or, that's what this or the is all subsidiary about. of Sony that owns this stuff. Because one thing I know about Sony um, is that they like when people talk about Sony, something that right. Sony's always been really good about is there's really there's like Sony, but then there's like parts of Sony all over the place. Sure, sure. And, you know, it's like they have thousands of offices where other production companies rent the office and then they get to produce things and put them out yeah. as Sony. And so who knows? I mean, there might be some way that Disney does finally step in and go, Sony, we want to buy up. You know, a bunch of stuff. I was well, really they shocked. Did that with Fox. They they bought only yeah. certain parts of Fox. Yeah. You know, yeah. as their entertainment division, they left other things alone. Uh, you know, so I think that's 
possibly it. I, I, I hate to say it, but it feels like Disney is trying to quash other companies just mercilessly so that yeah, they are. the other it's companies not sell the best parts to them. I can't yeah. believe that's always been the plan, you know? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They've been sitting, let's be honest, they're sitting somewhere doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, which, which is which is why I think that that DC Comics and Warner's are going to tr- probably end up teaming up with either Amazon or Netflix to basically make sure that they're part of a, a big empire as well. Yeah. Uh, so it says we'll see because there's no way that that DC and Warner's is going to be bought by Disney at this point because Disney mm-hmm. already owns Marvel and it just, it just that's not that's never going to work. Um, well, and I've wondered about what DC's big move will be. I did read something about that the app has not taken off the way they wanted it to. No, the they app said is they were going to wait. They originally no, said something like, "We're going to wait five years before we're going to be willing to sell any of the DC app shows to another uh, streamer," and that's not true. They've already released no, Titans no. is like all over Voodoo um, and all these other. Yeah, all that stuff's coming out on is either out or coming out on Blu-ray. So yeah. I, I think what did I think what DC did with their app is uh, they were ahead of, kind of ahead of the curve. I, I think what they were doing was premature, but I think it is a way of the future for other companies that have massive IP right. to hang on to it. And what you do, you know, if you're like Dark Horse Comics, you don't have the kind of clout that DC does. But if you have your own Dark Horse app and you're somehow filtering everything in there, but you, you make know what it happen. You know what happened I, to Dark Horse, right? You like, make yourself more attractive to other companies to buy you. And I think that's, yeah. that's well, a part I feel of- like the DC streaming was dead in the water before it even took off because the buzz around it was already negative. Um, people were excited about the Teen Titans stuff, but it wasn't like a oh my God, I have to see it. It was like, oh, cool. They're going to try to tackle this. But it, there was no excitement about it. The Everybody was just like, DC's doing what? They, now? Don't, they like, don't have a Stranger Things. They don't have like that show no, that'll draw no, in not, that massive base. Uh, yeah. And, and they're still farming things out elsewhere because we have Netflix picking up Sandman from Neil yeah. Gaiman. You know, so there's a lot of things that, that DC technically owns. And it's eight bucks a about. month. Like, I'm not saying it's like eight bucks doesn't sound like a lot of money, but when you've got five apps you're paying for monthly yeah. internet, right, right. It's, it's it's too like much. Like yeah. payment cost per month is like another app for eight dollars. I think that's the mistake, honestly. I think if right. DC had said, like, it's two bucks to watch our shows and it's another two bucks to get all the comics and the other stuff or something, right? right. It's it's more a la carte yeah. because that's the thing is that if, if they have everything under that that roof, under that app, it's a great deal. I mean, think about yeah. this. All of the TV, all of the movies going back years and years, all of the, you know, whatever, everything that's DC related is in one place. Every book. So you can go download Action Comics number one. Yeah. From that site. I mean, what who wouldn't do that's that? Awesome. Who would yeah. you know stuff like that? Uh, but again, I think they were just too, too early. I think if they had waited a couple more years, it would have been a smarter move to make. Because yeah. with Disney yeah. rolling out what they're rolling out, everybody else is just going to get lost in the dust. Yeah, know? and even though people are are still kind of like on the fence about Disney too, they're pumping out they're pumping out information with a lot of content. Like, hey, we're giving you this, 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 and that. Right. Where DC right. was just like, we're giving you this one thing, and then weeks later, you heard, oh, we might be doing this too. Like, it, it just was, I don't know. Right. So. Well, yeah, yeah they, they didn't really have everything in place when they were rolling it out, you know. Yeah. And and then, you know, by the time they got around to the Swamp Thing series, which universally was praised, uh, for whatever reason, they, they cut it down and from 13 they, episodes and then they canceled it. Canceled it, yeah. But, you know, Teen Titans is coming back. Doom Patrol is coming back. So, I mean, and those shows are, are hits. I mean, they, they've yeah. both been very successful. Uh what happened with Swamp Thing, though? It's like, it's really weird. And then the CW shows, how do they translate into the DC thing? And it's all part yeah, of... Yeah, Grunk uh, Horse says, DC Prime! Right. <laughs> you know, it's kind of all, all part of this, um, all these companies. And, and this is why the Sony thing is happening with, with Marvel right now, is that back in the day, they sold off bits and pieces that are now spread right. out among other companies. Oh, and now everybody knows that IP is king and they're all trying to get all of their content back under mm-hmm. one roof. And it's just freaking impossible at, at this point, unless you have the kind of money Disney has. So, so we've, we've covered the, 
as much as we could. Uh, eating that, um, that dark horse now. Listen, we can talk about comics. I brought, I brought some show and tell. Um, there's this crazy trend right now that I'm, I'm pretty happy about. And, the, and it is the, uh, the facsimile comics. Have you, have you guys seen these? The facsimile, yeah. 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 So this has even the ads on the back cover from nice. the original. And uh, all the ads on the inside from the original comic. This, is, uh, this one came out last week, and I picked it up. Uh, the reproduction yeah, yeah. quality is pretty fantastic uh, in the book. It's, oh, uh, that's it's, cool, yeah. it, it really is. It's three ninety nine dollars from yeah, a book yeah. that was, so uh, like I think, $0.20. Cents. Price, right? Yeah. Uh, but this is, of course, uh, Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill, one of the classic definitive Batman stories from the, uh, the early 70s. Uh, the, the first appearance of Swamp Thing came out today, House of Mystery. Mm. I I'm a sucker for these, and if they put the right ones out, Marvel did a Star Wars issue from the early Star Wars run a couple of months ago that I got. Uh, I mean, they did, the, they did the giant number one X Men. They did yes. uh, X Men number one. I mean, all of them are really the, awesome. Uh, even reprint the letters columns from back in yeah. the day. Well, I didn't uh, know they did that. Like I knew, I knew, I knew, but I didn't know yeah. it was like the letters in it too. It's yeah. exactly Facsimile everything is to be the original word for word. Yeah, yeah it is page awesome. for page. Yeah. which so is then, so cool because like if you want X Men number one, for instance, yep. you know you could have all the X Men except number one, but that's serious coin that you'd have to drop, yeah. right? Right. So being able to buy a facsimile means at least you have a copy in your house yeah, that, that you can. Exactly. You can even read. You could buy two if you want to be that person and have a reader and a copy. But like, at least with the facsimile, you've got one you can read comfortably too. Even if you own an original, like, how often do you want to open that kind you're of? Not gonna, you're not going to take it out. Yeah, you're not yeah. going to pull that out because I mean, this this issue goes for yeah, we, about four hundred, five hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, if you want to buy this in the original issue, you're going to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So you pay four bucks and you get to own something that maybe you've never read or never actually been able to enjoy. You can now afford to buy. So I think it's a it's a clever way to cash in on nostalgia. I yeah. think all the companies are sort of sitting up this flag to see how popular it is, though. And that's and Batman that's and Robin number one. No, no, this was uh, what was this? One? This was uh, two thirty two, issue number two thirty two. Uh, I was just taking a quick look. Like if you hop on eBay, first appearance of Ra's al Ghul is is the uh, issue. Ah, uh, so that's that's the big thing. You know, Ra's al Ghul is there, uh, so that's that's why this is such a hot book. Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams kind of at the top of their game as a writer and artist. Yeah, uh, it's like the very first one that pops up. Like the first two, if you wanted to buy this on eBay, the bidding is at $325 with like a couple of days left with 22 people watching it. The next yep. one's 500 bucks. So easily, easily 500 bucks. So you can spend what? Four bucks. You said 399. That's it. And you can and, finally own this. Yeah. Not the original, Ooh. but you own it. Here's one with and, the cover torn off for $170. <laughs> uh, well, exactly. <laughs> it's because it's that big of a book. So yeah, like, it says, but we have the cover. Cover available. <laughs> cover yeah. available. So it's, yeah. Yeah. And how many of those books are still in good shape? Yeah. I mean, that, that was a decade before the collector's industry really kicked in. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I went to the comic shop today. I got a few other little goodies. Ooh. I'm super happy, super psyched about this. Uh, this is uh, Spider-Man, Life Story, issue number six. Oh yeah, you're really uh, enjoying those, aren't you? Oh my God, this is so fantastic. It, it is, it's taken Spider-Man from the 1960s and each issue is a new decade and he ages 10 years with every issue. So in the 1960s, issue number one, he was a teenager and by the, the 2010s, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be what? He's going to be 70. Old man Spider-Man. Uh, and so every old issue... Man, is old man Peter Parker. <laughs> every issue is a different decade. It's like a giant what if story that keeps going uh, across six books. Uh, this is the last issue. I've read the first five. I can't wait to read this one. Uh, I'm sure to be out 40, of the Once What's he that? gets like 40 years old or older, they're going to start making jokes. He's like, oh, uh, yeah, it's not working today. <laughs> oh, <there's laughs> I've got a pill. Hold on. Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of weird stuff that, that happens along the way because it, it sort of takes into account 
the natural progression. So if he's in the '60s and the Fantastic Four and the, all these characters, right. Tony Stark by uh, by issue five in the early 2000s during the post 9/11 era, Tony Stark is the Secretary of Defense for the United States government. I wish. Yeah, well, no, he's a bit of a dick, though. So you know, yeah, look out. Yeah. Um, but but they, you know, they take into account real events, and they even touch on, you know, the symbiote suit from uh, the '80s with Secret Wars, how that would affect Peter Parker, who's in his 30s as opposed to being a teenager. And there, you know, it just kind of it's it's interesting how they they deal with it. I can't recommend it highly enough. Everybody should pick this up and read it. It's real well worth it. The other new uh, the new get that I got today. Yeah. Right here, Superman, number 14, and it's mainly because, Jack, we talked about it last week, right here in the corner, Legion of Superheroes. This, right. is, this is the book that was supposed <laughs> to be out two weeks ago that DC recalled and had destroyed because of, uh, we talked about this last week, the first appearance of the new Legion of Superheroes happens right here, and this little guy, this guy right here originally was, I know, I'm looking in reverse, was originally a uh, a white character, and they promoted it. Closer, actually, I was just trying to see the if it'll show me. Yeah, well, he no, they, 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 they redid it. Up. Yeah, yeah. So they had to take it back and redo that one guy's face. So they destroyed an entire line of books. Look at uh, that face. I just, I, that's for another show and another time because I could go into. <laughs> My little rant it's, about those kinds yeah, of things. You're on. Well, you're on. It's and on. here's my here's my beef about it. Here's my beef about it is I think DC were idiots for a uh, promoting it and showing everybody that character months and months ago, and then deciding to change arbitrarily change the race of the character, and then having to recall an entire print run of maybe a hundred thousand books and destroy them and reprint them again. I it's and like I even they, were shit with that. Earlier, they knew they were going to do something like that as opposed to making it such a last minute change. It makes no I sense. Can't, I can't deal with shit like that. Like it drives me up, up the wall. Like it really does. Like I'm all for inclusivity. I'm all for like, Hey, representation. Yes. I would sure. love to see somebody like me, <laughs> but here's the difference. Don't take a character and just like, poof, let's make it Hispanic. Let's make it black. Let's make it gay for the sake of doing that. Because then oh, it just, it doesn't become authentic. It becomes, uh, right. oh, let's fill this quota up and yeah, we right. can just interchange it. So that means that everybody's interchangeable no well like, create something that's like me don't take a white yeah. person it's like let's slap some black yeah. on that like i can't i don't like it i don't like it thank you, thank you. It's, it, it's offensive that they would arbitrarily do something like that isn't it i mean that's part <laughs> yeah, of it because wow. guess what jack and i are not the same we are oh. not the same. I cannot live <laughs> Jack's life and Jack can't live my life. So don't, good, and I know right? these are fictional characters, but it's the purpose behind it. Yeah. It's like, okay, this person is a white guy. Like, let's just yeah. deal with it. All right, fine. You know, next one, create there you go. a create whole like, character. Yeah, the example I always have like, is like you couldn't take Luke Cage. And then just go, he's Luke Cage, but now he lives in 90210 Beverly Hills and he's a white I said, the guy. Same <laughs> about, I said the same thing about Storm and I said the same thing yeah. about Hulk. You cannot take Storm and make her a white woman. You cannot take Hulk and make him this big. It's yeah. not. It's right, not right. 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 It, it's too arbitrary that they're doing it that way. And and you're right too. It's like this this is a series where they can create as many new characters as they want to create, as diverse as they want to make them. And now what they've done is they've invited controversy where there needs to be no controversy. That's what they're doing. They're slapping some black on it. That's exactly <laughs> what they're doing. They're just like, oh, copy and paste black. <laughs> Boom. That's well, it. Like before, before the character had red hair, he was like a ginger. <laughs> and so now you got all these gingers who are pissed off that they're yeah, being out of the picture. We're starting up gingers. Yeah. 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 And they're not going to protest. And I think DC knows they're not going to protest because none of them can stay out in the sun that long. So. <laughs> Yeah. Get letters about that. Where are the gingers <laughs> rising up about this? They should. Have a right? ginger, damn it! 
but but no, also like also it in, it invites. I think it invites the wrong kind of element out there who are the the white supremacist assholes who run around the comics gate idiots who run around, you know, preaching for yeah. you know white power whatever the fuck they're preaching. I don't know, <laughs> but this invites them to now jump into this conversation and yeah. demonize this book before it comes out. Right? Why would you well, fuel? Why would you fuel the arguments of idiots? It's, well, it's you're one hundred percent true. And then I I know quite a few you know black people, Hispanic people that are like, stop doing that because all it's showing is that we are interchangeable and replaceable, and right. we you know we don't earn anything. It's just like oh, let's shut them up here. Here you go. Now so and so is black. That's yeah. all you're doing is you're shutting us up by saying no we included a black person and i'm right. just like how about you not kill the one black person you have in your movies the first go around how about you make them live the whole that's inclusivity right, right. there okay. i don't well, know they have like a band-aid right they're just kind of slapping yeah. a band-aid to get the quiet they really are. where there's like it's time and effort put into the backstory of a character and right. so you're right there's a lack of investment in like yeah. if you're going to create a character whether it's black hispanic or who cares if you're going to create the character, give the, the readers the decency of, of putting the backstory in to make that work. Exactly. You know, like you can't, and that's one thing I will say, I think I've heard um, of several groups, uh, comic groups I'm a part of when they talk about LGBT rights and, and characters, like it's really frustrating when you take a character that's been around for a hundred years or whatever, and you just go, Oh, now they're gay. And you're yeah. like, well, no, wait a minute. We've got a lot of backstory with them where that doesn't really make sense. And, can you not just write a new character, give them proper backstory? Yeah, like, really grow give them the them? struggle, give them the heartache, give them the yeah. overcoming what they need to overcome. Because, I mean, because well, it's true plenty. what you say, it reneges the original character's backstory. Well, there are plenty of characters out there that are not fully fleshed out that, that exist. Yeah. That could be you could pick up a character who's a minor character. Well, they've never the really had a, a, a romantic right. relationship. There are plenty of characters where yeah. romance isn't part of the story. Yeah. If right. you introduce it now, you could start that dialogue. Yeah. Totally. Um, but before you know, we hit enough controversy, but I got one more, one more piece of controversy, <laughs> and, and we can end. We can end on this because uh, I think my blood pressure will be too high by the time we get to the end of this. Wait, 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 before we do that, then we can, let's go ahead. We're, we're, this is a very controversial episode, right? Yeah, yeah, very controversial. There's two things I'm going to do here. We Our prize um, is going to be a mystery prize, but we have stacks of comics. So um, we are going to ship out some some comics to somebody. The I, I think the current request is a theory on, and I'll bring it back up here, on Ray's evil yep. appearance. Give, right. it, give us a good, good reason. Give us a good theory. Give us a good reason why she's doing yeah. it. And, and I will tell you guys that when you're writing your theory on why Ray looks like this, funny <laughs> will probably get you more points <laughs> well, than, than legit yeah. theory. Like your, your theory could be dead on and turn out to be the, the truth. And I'm, we're probably not going to choose you as the winner. If it makes us <laughs> laugh. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, so this could be like a some sort of uh, sex fantasy dream of Kylo Ren, or something, <laughs> like an S and M. Jeff Wayne. Can't do that one. Jeff Wayne. Send me those so, books, Jack. I win. So, b before we uh, before we move on, and I'll try to post something on the Facebook as a reminder. Where would she put that double bladed it? lightsaber, though? That's the question. <laughs> hey. Um. The last thing I will say before you go into your blood pressure rising uh, uh, comment is I feel like we can collectively, like we can kind of get to this nice point here of, uh, of controversy by just saying, fuck the white supremacists and whatever neo-Nazi propaganda crap you have out there. If you have any problem... They're like my favorite people. Said, Stop it. <laughs> just kidding. Like comics, comics know gate that we're not your fans. Not right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the comics gate people are not going to be our fans. Sorry. But yeah. that's all right. They're they're pretty small, loud group. But uh, much much like the small, loud group that support uh -oh. um, a, a certain president. I don't know that I should mention names. I don't suppose. But I mean, you can believe what you want to believe. <laughs> yeah. 
There's my, there's my no. Um, you guys have heard about Marvel issue number 1000, which is like, speaking of arbitrary, that's just yeah. like picking a number out of nowhere. But Marvel issue number 1000, and Mark Wade, who is a, a well-known writer, has worked for DC, he's worked for Marvel, uh, he's gotten into trouble with the Comics Gate people who some of them have complained and said, oh, you know, he's such a, he's a liberal. And when he was an editor, he wouldn't give me jobs. And that's why I can't work at DC or Marvel. It's like, well, no, maybe you can't work at DC and Marvel because you're not really talented enough to work at DC and Marvel. And now you're finding an excuse, which I think is what a lot of these clowns are doing. It's like, oh, I'm not getting work because I, I'm a right winger and Mark Wade won't hire me. And he was sued. He actually had, uh, there was some people raising money to help him support his legal fees and defeating these clowns who were coming after him uh, because they felt like they deserved a voice whether they had talent or not, which is an argument for another day. But the head of Marvel Comics, Ike Perlmutter, who we didn't mention by name last week, Jack, but we did reference him. Uh, he is the, uh, the main guy at Marvel right now. Mark Wade is working for Marvel and is, is a major part of writing this this relaunch of the Marvel Universe continuity that's yeah. going on, uh, where it's like everybody has a new entry point into Marvel. It's all going to make sense. We're kind of starting at the beginning of Marvel history and giving you a clean history of the Marvel Universe type of, of setup. This is all Mark Wade is doing this. Uh, issue number 1000 for Marvel Comics includes a big part of this. And uh, as part of it, Mark Wade and others had written essays to go in this giant issue number 1000, talking about fundamentals of Captain America, what he stands for, what it means in the bigger picture. Captain America, of course, uh, very famously got his start punching Nazis. Punching Nazis. Yep. Well, Ike Perlmutter That's is now movie. supporting... Ike Perlmutter, the head of Marvel, is now supporting a president who thinks Nazis are good guys on both sides of the uh, the equation. And supporting him financially, Perlmutter is donating tons of money. Like he is one of the top donors yeah. to the re-election of a certain president. And so his politics and Mark Wade's politics obviously run in the opposite direction. As a result, Mark Wade had written an essay talking about the importance of Captain America opposing these things that are very un-American and are very divisive and at the, the heart of them are very evil. Well, Ike Perlmutter pulled Mark Wade's essay out of the book, yep. censoring the story about talking about Captain America being the most Captainist Americanist that you could be. Because Ike Perlmutter's current political viewpoint doesn't line up with yeah. the viewpoint of the one of the title characters of the company that he runs. And there is a fear now that censorship of that sort, because the, a lot of the Comics Gate people, they bitched because Thor was turned into a woman, remember? Yeah, hold they on. Before we go further, that, for, for our listeners, actually, um, Jeff, if you would, give yeah. us a short... Uh, the comic gate is something, I mean, I'm familiar oh, with yeah, it. Yeah. I know we've talked about it before, but define yeah. that for everybody. It, it is this, this small group of uh, writers and artists who are saying that they're being kept from having lucrative careers at a place like DC or Marvel because of their political viewpoint, because they are not uh, liberal leaning, that they, they have right wing political viewpoints and they protest things like having made Thor into a female character. Uh, they protest in any sort of changes. And that's why I mentioned it with the, uh, the the Superman and the Legion thing. That's exactly up their alley. Oh, this character was white, and now you've made him black, and you liberals are ruining comics. That's kind of the comics gate. That's their beef. Uh, and every little thing that pops up like that is something that they latch on to. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they also are doing very politically charged comic book stories that are right-wing kind of fantasy type things. They've tried to uh, fund some of these on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and some other places. One of them was uh, raised over $100,000 in support before Kickstarter pulled it because they found out that it was promoting hate speech. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what the Comicsgate thing is in a, in a tiny nutshell. I, I mean, I don't want to right. belabor the point because I don't want to give them too much oxygen. Sure. But it's, 
just it's a bunch of people grinding their axe, and now somebody who is sympathetic to them is in charge of Marvel Comics and has effectively censored the guy he's hired to rewrite the history of the Marvel Universe for basically talking about the fundamental philosophies of Captain America, at, at, just at face value. I mean, Not, it's, it, and yeah. it's crazy to think about. You have, you, you have to recognize at like what level his personal political and, and even personal affiliation um, right. comes into play on this, considering that you're like, he put that above the fact of just the common sense that Captain America, his whole backstory right. is fighting Nazis, not just fighting Nazis, but fighting like the worst inner cell of, of the, the Nazi or the Third Reich. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, white supremacist of, of all of uh, homophobia, you know. All yeah. Of, you know, and he's uh, like the last character that you would think you would even try to dip your toe into meddling with in that way right. uh, from a CEO's standpoint, no matter what your personal beliefs are. So the yeah. fact that he – he would even do it tells you that like he's really driven by his his political or personal opinion and, if this, and if this is a true relaunch of marvel basically a, a new marvel with everybody coming in at, at ground zero and this is how he's starting it yeah is this how he's starting it he is he going to redefine these characters as being because guess what and, and the, the comic skate people use the term social justice warrior all the time so if you're online and you're in a comic chat room or a chat page, and you see somebody bitching about SJWs, ignore them immediately because they're completely comic book character. Captain America is a social justice warrior. Yeah. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Spider Man, they're all social justice warriors. Daredevil, you, I mean, go on and name yeah. all of them. They're fighting yeah. for the, the little people, they're the fighting good. for yeah. the oppressed. Yeah. And for equality, I, that's the thing that binds all of them really is, yeah, yeah. is equality. I mean, one of the things, one of the great moments, right, is when you have somebody like uh, um, a good example is Punisher and Daredevil who, who don't get along. If you've read this stuff, you know that, um, or even seen the show, Daredevil and Punisher essentially only don't get along on one concept, which right. is killing people. Punisher right. says, if you're a bad person, you deserve to die. And Punisher says, you shouldn't be killing people. But they agree on everything else. Women, right. children, minority, it doesn't matter. Everybody's equal. Everybody deserves the same respect. They don't care. They don't care what church you go to. Right. They don't care, you know, how you vote. Well, they care they, that what? you're selling drugs. And they're even like they're right. even times that they're like, oh, you're selling a little pot on the corner to your friend down the street. Nobody gives a shit. But the guy selling cocaine to children, the punisher, right. you're in, like when he kills people like this, the daredevil and spider man, they always kind of have this like, ah, you shouldn't have, but right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but, but part of that part of that is there because that brings up that conversation of why one thing is is viewed one way and the other are, are we now going to stop having a fair conversation are we too sensitive are there too many snowflakes out there in the hot sun who don't want to have that debate anymore and therefore you get ike Perlmutter in charge of marvel comics saying that's okay we won't have that debate anymore we're not right. going to have Captain America taking sides against fucking Nazis in America yeah. because we don't want to piss off people like me, Ike Perlman. We don't want to piss off people who might buy the comic. You know, are we don't, Nazis. So, we yeah. don't want to. Yeah, we don't want to stop Nazis and and white supremacists from buying our comics. That'd be terrible. Exactly. Like, yeah, and, and that's 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 where we are right now. And I think it's very very dangerous. And and oh, yeah. I know. I know I, I still buy books from Marvel. I know most people do, but it really, this, this happening this week has made me reconsider buying all the books that I'm buying from Marvel. I, I gotta yeah, tell you. Yeah. But because yeah, I'm already this, checking out some DC stuff, so. Yeah. I'm the, in, the I'm market, in the you know. last week, I, um, I found out about WWE and Vince McMahon and their ties to the certain president. And I was like, no. And then this week it's Marvel. I'm like, I just can't wait. Nobody wants me to have fun anymore. Like I can't even deal. So yeah. I'm like, what's next week? What are you taking away from me next week? So, well, but here's yeah. the thing too, though. It's like, you know, I can be a right wing tool supporting Trump all he wants <laughs> because most, most heads of corporations are. Right. They don't care about social justice. They don't care about anything except for the bottom line of their bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And they don't worry about how many people get crushed, ruined, or killed along the way. 
And that's just their their political ideology. And they got to be in charge of corporations because they're pretty ruthless people. But when they start interfering with editorial content, and when they yeah. start using that power they have to mold what the readers are getting to conform with their ideology, that's dangerous. Yeah. And that is dangerous. And, and I think the more people that complain, the better about that. Because, you know, I can vote for and pay and give $20 million to whomever he wants, but you can't change Captain America. Yeah. Well, and it may, you yeah, know, if, but you should find out you're donating to a certain cause. They may not want to buy your stuff. Um, exactly. But no, that's Chick my problem. Chick-fil-A has, you know? Chick-fil-A has had to deal with this now for, uh, for many, many years. Once their anti-gay stance came out, I know nobody buys from them on Sundays, but a lot of people <laughs> The rest of the week too, because of that, and it's like the the free market conservative viewpoint is oh let the markets decide, and you know what? Tell everybody the full truth and nothing but the fucking truth yes. about what you're doing, and then let them decide where they want to spend their money. And you know an educated market? decision, yeah. Yeah. an informed decision. That's I mean, the truth is technically I don't buy from Chick Fil A, but if somebody buys it for me, I'm eating it. It's okay. I, I honestly haven't called it Chick Fil A for like six years or four uh, years or something. I always refer to it as hate chicken. Hate um, chicken, <laughs> right? Well, apparently, apparently Popeyes is getting a big resurgence now because they're trying to uh, jump in on the. You know what? If Chick Fil A is going to take all the heat, we got better chicken across the street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what well, uh, I always said, if you if you started selling the like if you just sold the waffle fries. And the, and the dip sauce, like if you could set up a little stand outside of Chick-fil-A and you're like, no, 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 we'll give you free waffle fries and whatever dipping sauce you want, people would just keep going. <laughs> They're not at Chick-fil-A because well, they're giving, it about uh, giving your money to. Just just everybody go to Chick-fil-A and go in and act mm-hmm. like you um, act like you just bought something in the drive-thru <laughs> and, and get a bunch of free right. sauces and basically crush them economically by taking free sauces when you didn't buy anything. Yay! Family time! Family time! This is how we distress. Hi. Hi, look. Here you Hi. are. Yeah. Oh, it, I almost want another one. Just almost. <laughs> Jack will let you borrow that one for the weekends, right? No. Yeah, All right. I think, I think we've belabored the point here, but that's yeah. that's the end of that rant uh, for me. Hey, I, I, thanks. We got a bunch of. Uh, Comments popping in. Uh, Katie and yeah. Jimmy both seem to be agreeing with us. So thank you, guys. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, DC Comics, AEW, and Popeyes for the win. I think that's what's going to have to be. There you go. The, yeah. the thing. <laughs> we don't mean to be a political podcast or a political show. And it's going to happen every now and again. It's it never is. a good thing. And, and quite honestly, uh, I would like for somebody to come along and actually provide a, a defense for what Ike Perlmutter did. Yeah. I don't please, think that's possible. Please defend it if you can. I uh, dare you. We'll really listen. Uh, but apparently there <laughs> is uh, there's a version <laughs> of that, that was a promo version that went out that still has the essay in it. So maybe that'll be a collector's item. <laughs> All right, Jack's about to be taken off the air. Yep. Uh, that's <laughs> probably it. That's going to do it. That's going to do it for this week. Uh, I'm off to uh, Dragon Con for at least a day. <gasps> So I'll be seeing a lot of folks we interviewed, plus a few others uh, coming up this weekend. I'll try to get, I'll get some footage. I'm not going to try. I will. I'll get some footage uh, that we can show. So. Yeah. Dragon Con. Dragon Con. I know. I'm just going to go on Sunday. That's after everybody has pretty much gotten drunk and hung over and are too tired to be debaucherous, I think. So we'll see how that goes. Cool. Well, uh, uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and pull myself out. All right. Um, but uh, we, we want to say thank you to our sponsors, to uh, Heroes Con, and to Heroes Aren't Hard to Find, and, of course, the Elite Foundation. Woo-hoo. That's right. Thank you, guys. As always, uh, issueswithshow.com is the website. Lots of goodies over there. Check us out on Facebook, and you can uh, share with your friends for a chance to win all kinds of goodies because we are keeping track of that, too. So uh, lots of ways to win, and keep your eyes open for interviews and exclusive content coming from us in the very near future i'm jeff that's cat captain jack has already uh pulled himself out he's he's on his way i think it's feeding time or something I, I, <laughs> anyway uh that's it for this week we'll see you guys next time on the breakdown